In this lecture, we're going to consider the types of materials that make for good springs. So what materials make a good spring? Well, first off, we, we want high ultimate strength. We want the, the spring to resist uh, breaking. We also want a high yield strength. We want it to uh, deform and then return to its natural position. We want a low modulus of elasticity. What I mean by a low modulus of elasticity is consider these two materials. So this is a stress strain curve, and in the stress strain curve we have this red material that if you notice for a very small displacement produces a high amount of stress. That's not a good spring material. What we would rather see is that for a certain amount of stress we get a lot of displacement. So we want a low modulus, modulus of elasticity. And finally, we probably want to uh, deal with fatigue as well. We, we want the, the material to be resistant to fatigue. And as we've already discussed, some material does that better than other materials. ASTM has certain materials that they list as being better than others uh, for making materials. And what typically happens is the material is extruded, cold extruded as a wire, and so in this first case, it's a cold-drawn or hard-drawn wire, and that's the A227. And, uh, and there's some statistics here. You can look through this. This is coming from Norton's uh, textbook. So you should be able to look in, your, in the textbook at Table 14.1 and get the information that you need here. Also, we see that uh, with these different materials that there are certain wires that are created um, and then wound at different, at different coil rates. We'll be talking about this in, a, in the next lecture. Uh, but what we can see here is that uh, the A228, for instance, has a very wide range at the small end, but doesn't do so good at the larger end. This is talking about a wire diameter of, point, of a quarter of an inch. So this is a, a reference. Again, this information can be found in Norton's machine design textbook. Table 14.3 shows us the cost of common spring waters, wires. So you can see the A227 is the cheapest, both for individual quantities and for warehouse quantities. Um, and this music wire, which we'll use quite a bit in this class, uh, is really expensive for individual, for small uh, quantities, but for large quantities can be quite um, inexpensive. And the music wire had a pretty good return for um, fatigue, so it's a decent wire to use for fatigue. Up until now, when we wanted to know the strength of a material, we looked in the back of the book, found out what kind of material it was, we looked in the back, and then independent of geometry, we understood that the strength stayed the same. Because of the way that the spring wire material is cold drawn through a die, that's not the case. In other words, what's happening is as the wires are created, there's a work hardening that's, that's affected and so different diameters affect, are affected by that differently. And so we have a new equation now. The ultimate strength is not just a constant. Instead, it's an exponentially um, driven curve based on the diameter, the wire diameter. This is, this is new for us. But once we understand what's happening, all we have to do is one more formula to find the ultimate tensile strength, and we move forward using ultimate tensile strength like we have in the past. So we have uh, values for B and A. And again, I'm going to caution you, as I typically do as we, as we deal with exponential curves, that you make sure you have the correct units for your constants in the exponential curve. Now, something else that we'll talk about in the next video is that the spring is going to fail because of shear. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but uh, as we look at the, the fact that the spring is going to fail because of shear, we have a new equation that's going to say that the ultimate shear strength of the material is about two-thirds of the ultimate strength. Now, this is really important. What we're going to do is we're going to switch and begin looking. Instead of at tensile strengths, we'll be looking at shear strengths since that's how the spring fails. Now, it's important to know, in past lectures, we've talked about how the, the yield uh, shear strength is uh, 0.577, what the yield strength is. But notice the equation that we're dealing with right now is the ultimate strength, not the yield strength. So this equation here is still valid, 
Just make sure you understand there's a difference between these two numbers. This is talking about the, the, the relationship between ultimate tensile strength and ultimate shear strength. This equation is talking about the relationship between yield strength and yield shear strength.